Engine and fuel work together. It's as simple as that. And just as engines know how to blend the right quantities of fuel, air, and spark together for ignition, fuel companies are given the recipe that they must meet in order for their refineries to turn a barrel of crude oil into unleaded or diesel brew. Between them, good energy, but bad emissions are made. What comes out of the tailpipe is the focus of Australian fuel consumption and carbon dioxide, or CO2, testing, the result of which are published on a yellow, red, and green sticker glued to the front of all new vehicles. Three fuel consumption numbers are displayed, labelled urban, extra urban, and combined, each in litres of fuel consumed per 100 kilometres, next to the number of grams of CO2 produced per kilometre. Burning a litre of petrol emits 2.3 kilograms of CO2, while diesel emits 2.7. So these numbers are just multiplied by the fuel a vehicle uses per kilometre. To find the above numbers, the official Australian design rules 81-02 fuel consumption test places each vehicle in a laboratory for 20 minutes. It includes a 13-minute urban simulation that spikes the vehicle from standstill to just under 20 kilometers an hour, 30 kilometers an hour, 50 kilometers an hour, and to standstill in four repetitions. Then it moves to a seven minute extra urban cycle that accelerates to 70, slows to 50, speeds back to 70, and then gradually to 100 and 120 kilometers per hour. While the combined figure is then averaged in urban's favor, it's not a facsimile of real world conditions. And Europe has since switched to a newer test aimed at better replicating the way people actually drive. Europe also taxes its cars based on the CO2 as it harms the planet, but we in Australia don't. That means a Toyota Camry Hybrid can produce 111 grams of CO2 per kilometer, and a Toyota Hilux diesel can belch out twice that at 223 grams of kilometer of CO2 without any penalty. But we do join our European allies in capping other noxious emissions, and whether it's a hybrid or a diesel guzzler, the exhaust gases must not exceed a certain limit. Think of the ash left after a bonfire. Following an engine's combustion process, fuel will leave residual matter. This includes a mixture of carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, better known as NOx, volatile organic compounds, particulate matter, and sulfur dioxide. NOx is a core contributor to smog, and it irritates respiratory systems, affects asthma sufferers, and reduces lung function, as do sulfur oxides that are also a precursor to acid rain. Particulate matter penetrates deep into the lungs, contributing to respiratory illnesses and cardiovascular cancer, while others interfere with blood's capacity to carry oxygen and lead to cause nose irritations, headaches, liver, kidney, and central nervous system damage. How bad is it? In 2011, the federal government found that these contributed to the premature deaths of 2,549 Australians, more than the national road toll. A 2013 study showed that 9% of heart disease deaths were due to inhaling particulate matter, while in urban areas, vehicles contributed to 70% of NOx. Yet we're still behind the times because Australia is pinned to the outdated Euro 5 emissions regulations and not the newer Euro 6 standards. Euro 5 mandates that passenger cars must emit no more than 60 to 180 milligrams of NOx per kilometre driven for petrol and diesel respectively. However, light commercial vehicles are permitted 82 to 280 milligrams per kilometre for both petrol and diesel. In essence, a diesel Hilux can legally produce over four times the NOx of a Camry hybrid. In reality, it can be a lot more though, because Toyota claims the Hilux produces up to 261 milligrams of NOx per kilometre, while the Camry hybrid emits just 1.6 milligrams per kilometre. Meanwhile, Euro 6 standards tighten diesel passenger cars and LCVs to no more than 80 to 125 milligrams per kilometre of NOx, but there's no timeline for its Australian introduction. It doesn't help that Australia's unleaded is among the dirtiest in the world either, with 150 parts per million of sulphur in our regular unleaded versus 10 parts per million in Europe. The federal government believes that the phasing out of regular unleaded and harmonising with Europe would decrease NOx, volatile organic compounds, and carbon monoxide emissions for motor vehicles by 29% by 2030, saving lives and providing $3.1 billion in health savings. While requirements to upgrade Australia's four ageing oil refineries means they have resisted, modelling shows that the alignment with Europe will add 2.3 cents per litre to the cost of unleaded. There's a question they debate though. Is that a price you're willing to pay? at the pump.